Hi there, so you've got your license. Brilliant. You've got your antenna, you've got your rig. Now all that's left for you to do is to pick up one of these and call CQ. Have you done it before? Maybe not. Well, let's discuss how you could. Tim G5TM. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you're a returning viewer and a subscriber, then brilliant. Thanks for stopping by again and thanks for saying hello. And if you're someone who stumbled across my channel for the first time, then welcome. And think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell for any future videos. Okay then, calling CQ. Now, uh, if you've come from maybe an 11 meter background, CB background, and you're now coming to do some, uh, you know, coming on to the amateur uh, HF bands or VHF, UHF frequencies, whatever you're going on, then calling CQ probably doesn't hold that many terrors for you. If, however, you've come to the hobby fresh from the outside of uh, radio, uh, or maybe you have very little experience of picking up a microphone, then perhaps calling CQ produces one or two more uh, sort of butterflies in the tummy. Absolutely fine, we've all been there, uh, but maybe I can give you a bit of a guide as to how you can go about doing it and give you a bit of a insight into the best ways perhaps, or the way I use anyway, should I say, in terms of calling CQ. I think the important thing about calling CQ is being clear. So clarity is important. So I think that rule number one of the calling and rules, or my advice number one, uh, would be to use phonetics, not letters. Uh, I've been guilty of doing that, by the way. Um, but use phonetics. Um, so instead of um, M7ABC, you'd say Mike 7 Arthur Bravo Charlie, okay? And of course, some letters are worse than others. So S and F, M and N, uh, P and G, J and G. There's lots of letters that sound familiar. And of course, if you've got somebody who's calling CQ and their um, maybe their signal strength isn't fantastic, uh, maybe they've got a bit of QSB, which is where their signals go up and down in and out of your noise floor maybe, then uh, you know, you'll be looking for them to be as clear as possible as indeed you will need to be. So if you're calling CQ, if you're the one that's calling CQ, or even responding to a CQ, then using the phonetic alphabet makes it a lot easier for the other person to actually understand you, and indeed, for you to understand them. You tend to find there's two types of CQ calls. You've got the general CQ calls, where someone just calls uh, uh, CQ, CQ, this is Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie, calling uh, CQ and standing by. So there isn't actually a specific thing they're looking for. And then you've got the more specific CQ calls. So you'd have people looking for particular parts of the world. So you might hear maybe on 20 or 40 meters, uh, a really good station, big powerful station, perhaps from Italy, UK as well, or maybe from some like Russia, uh, calling uh, CQ North America, CQ Pacific, CQ South America, what else, CQ VK ZL, Australia, New Zealand. So some people have the capacity, the power and the antenna systems where they can beam literally uh, to different parts of the world. And you might hear someone calling DX. Now in the, in the world of HF, if you're living in the UK, for example, if someone's calling DX, uh, then you're basically looking for somebody outside of your continent. So they're looking for someone outside of Europe in the main. So, you know, you've got two types of CQ calls, okay? The general ones and the more specific ones, usually looking for particular or wider uh, parts of the world in terms of location. So what should you do when calling CQ? Well, the first thing you do is listen, okay? Don't say anything into the microphone, listen. And you're listening for a very good reason. You might have found a frequency that's free, okay? So uh, there's no one on there and you might come across it. So five seconds later, oh, you're gonna pick up the microphone and you're gonna call CQ, right? Well, no. The reason being you need to listen. And this is whether you're on HF or whether you're on VHF, two meters, 77, six meters, whatever you're on, okay? So the first thing you do is listen. And listen for a good minute. Spend 60 seconds listening to that frequency, or a bit more if you want to, okay? Just to make sure no one's on there. Yes, you can always run a risk of somebody jumping in to an empty frequency ahead of you, but you're doing the right thing, okay? So listen on that frequency in case someone is actually, you know, there. Because it might be, for example, you'd only hear one half of the conversation. 
So you might be listening at that moment in time to the person you can't hear, and then suddenly 30 seconds later, someone's S7, S8, or whatever they are, and you can hear them. Clearly, the frequency is in use. So you need to listen for about 30 seconds, probably 60 is better, just to make sure that frequency is actually free. Okay, so you've listened for the time, dead silence, nobody on the frequency. Then you check if the frequency is in use, all right? So you just say, uh, is the frequency being used? Is the frequency in use? Pause for a few seconds, try again. Pause for a few seconds, try again. After that, you've given 60 seconds of listening, you check three times, a relatively quick succession, asking if the frequency is in use. You can't do any more than that. Then the frequency is yours. And then you start calling CQ. So when you start calling CQ, it's important that you say your call sign clearly, especially now this is on HF, because HF you tend to find a lot more in the range of what we call QSB, where signals literally go up and down, fade in and out, okay? Uh, sometimes they'll be rock solid, sometimes they'll fade in and out. So you've got to be, you know, you've got to get your CQ call out there. So take your time, all right? You know, spend 30 seconds on that initial CQ call. Take your time. Okay, so basically then you're ready to call CQ. You've checked that the frequency is available. Uh, you're ready to launch into your CQ call. So you say CQ, CQ, this is Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie, calling CQ, CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ. You repeat it again a couple of times, and then at the end it's critical that you say, uh, Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie, calling CQ and standing by, or maybe CQ and listening, or CQ over. Because it's important for the people, listen, whoever might be listening to you, to be able to understand when you finished calling CQ, to have that final full stop at the end of your CQ call. Then you're giving them the invitation to reply back to you. Okay, so what I've done earlier on, I uh, called CQ. Conditions aren't great today, but I managed to make a contact on 40 meters, calling CQ and getting that person to reply. So let's have a look at that now uh, as an example of how to do it on HF. We'll have a look at VHF, maybe two meters, as a little slightly different example in a minute. Just, but just for HF, let's listen to what happened earlier uh, with a QSO I made or had just now. Uh, is the frequency being used? Golf 5 Tango Mike listening. Is the frequency in use please? Golf 5 Tango Mike. Final check, is the frequency being used, please? Hello, C. Hello, CQ40. Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ40 meters. This is Golf 5 Tango Mike. Golf 5 Tango Mike calling CQ40. Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ40 meters. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Calling CQ40. Hello CQ, hello CQ. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Calling CQ on 40 and standing by. Oscar Zulu slash Delta Delta 1 Alpha Delta. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the call. Uh, your signal report is 5 by 7, 57, and my name is Tim, Tango India Mike. Oscar Zulu slash Delta Delta 1 Alpha Delta from Golf 5 Tango Mike. Okay, two meters. Now, two meters, you have a... De uh, we're talking about FM here, by the way, okay? And I think there's also a designated calling channel on SSB as well. But let's look at two meters FM, all right? 145.500 in the UK is the designated calling frequency for two meters FM, all right? So it's a calling frequency. Now, unlike HF, where you need to repeat your call quite a few times, because we're dealing with FM, unless there's a lift on, right, a, trop a bit of tropo, basically, you're likely to have point-to-point -point signals. So effectively, you're going to be heard, you're going to be heard. So you can keep your CQ calls fairly short on two meters. You can say CQ two meters, CQ, this is Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie, 
Mike 7 Alpha Bravo Charlie calling CQ on 2 metres and standing by. That's fine. You don't need to go on for two or three more goes to try and make sure people can hear you with QSB, which is what you have on HF. 2 metres is slightly different. Now, another hint and tip. You're going to be on 145-500 calling. Now, you've got two approaches to your 2 metre CQ calls and how you deal with someone who comes back to you. A good hint and tip for you, before you go up to 500 to start calling for CQ on 2 metres, is just to listen down to the frequencies just below and just slightly above it to see whether any of those particular 2 metre channels are available. So if 475 is free, just listen to it for, for maybe a minute or two. If no one's on there, you can even check the frequencies in use if you want to. Then you know, if you make a, a, get someone coming back to you on your CQ call on 500, you can go down to 475. Okay, you know 475 is available. You could always ask the other person to choose a frequency as well, but if you've gone to the trouble of checking that, then from your perspective, you know the 475 is probably going to be free. Now, I say probably, because even when you go down there, having got someone come back to you, all right, you've still got to make the check. So let's say, for example, you've called CQ and M6 XYZ has replied back to you. So uh, you say, right, okay, thank you, M6 X-Ray Yankee Zulu. Thanks for coming back to me. Would you like to QSY, which is obviously change frequency, okay? So QSY, or move to uh, 145, 475. Or you can just say 475, to be honest with you. So you go down to 475. Now, before you start your QSO, the first thing you do is, uh, this is Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie, just checking the frequency is still available or is not in use. Nobody comes back, you say, nothing heard. The other station might do the same. And then you say, well, Good afternoon, uh, Mike 6, X-Ray Yankee Zulu. This is Mike 7, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Uh, thanks for coming back to my call. My name is... And then off you go. And you start your QSO, okay? So that would be my way of uh, dealing or calling CQ on two metres and moving to uh, another frequency. So there you are. That's a very quick little look at calling CQ. Um, obviously, once you've got somebody coming back to you, you then got to think of what you're going to say to them. That'll be another video. We're going to look at how you can develop a QSO, uh, what sort of things you can discuss, maybe what sort of things you shouldn't discuss. And, uh, you know, just getting, getting yourself into a routine. Well, it doesn't get boring for you, but you've got like a structure in place. So when you've got someone coming back to you and you're moving to a different frequency on two meters or they're coming back to you on the same frequency, which is fine on HF, then you're then beginning to think, well, oh, what do I say now? Uh, I, can give my, I can give my call sign. Uh, what's next? So we'll look at that in a future video, how to build a QSO. And this will be the same for you, by the way, if you were actually calling CQ or answering somebody else's CQ. But by the way, of course, the important thing to recognise is as well that whoever has called CQ effectively controls that frequency. So, you know, once you've had your call, your, your discussion with the guy, maybe, or the lady on two metres, you're on 475, 145, 475, once they say 73 and goodbye, you can then say, are there any other stations monitoring? This is Mike 7, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, listening for anyone else. You might get someone coming back to you. If no one says anything to you, you then say, Mike 7, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, QSY, which is moving frequency, don't forget, QSY back to 145, 500. Or if you're turning the radio off, you say, going QRT. Okay? So, and if you're on HF, you can say again, the QSO has finished. It's your, it's your frequency. You're in charge of the frequencies. So you say, this is Mike 7 Alpha Bravo Charlie, uh, listening for any other stations. And then if no one comes back to you, you go back to calling CQ. All right? So, hopefully that helps you. Anyway, we'll talk about QSO building again. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is Tim G5TM wishing you, especially if you're a brand new M7 op, good luck with calling CQ, whether it's on HF or any other uh, frequency. Good luck with it, 73, and uh, I'll catch you again. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.